All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 15th. We are a day or so away from the new year on the Hebrew calendar. So it's getting to a very, very exciting time. <laughs> I know for all of us who are watching and praying and paying attention and repentant, it's a very, very exciting time. Um, you know, as for, I don't know how many of you followed with the, with the uh, feast, or sorry, with the feast. No, that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Um, but with the fast, right, the Daniel 1 fast, I am uh, hours away. So tonight at sundown will be the end of that fast, which was uh, vegetables, a little bit of fruit and water. That's all I've been eating for the last almost 10 days as of tonight. And then uh, tonight we're going to go have some sushi. And then tomorrow I have pulled the kids out of school. The wife has taken the day off work. And we're out of Calgary. We're in Canada close to the mountains. So we're going to head out to Canmore for brunch at a French restaurant. And then we're going to drive out to Banff, go to uh, the Banff Springs. We're going to go to um, uh, 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 the hot springs that are up in there in Banff. And we're going to have an awesome dinner something we've wanted for a long time but it's very expensive so we had to wait for some things to come in and we're just going to enjoy we know the time is short and uh, you know I've put out this fast and been getting information and looking for the Lord to reveal more um, you know I've lost about 12 13 pounds by the time all is said and done and I'm not that big of a guy but I, I was I was able to use, lose a few pounds uh, but the main purpose of it was, of course, uh, what we get to see here in Daniel 1. So I'm just going to touch on this. This is just to say, you know, it's coming to the end. Tonight will be the end of it. And did I highlight it? I think I did. Yeah, here it is. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And for doing it, it talks about, you know, not eating meat and that it's, you know, what they're allowed to have. And here's what they get. See, as for the four children of God, God gave them knowledge and skill in learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. This is why I did it. Whoops. This was why I did it. Right. I want to draw closer to the Lord as much as I can, however I can. And I'll be honest with you, it really wasn't that difficult. After a couple days, the, the cravings for the breads and sugars go away. And, uh, you know, it, it's really not that big of a deal. But I did it to draw closer to the Lord and to show that I had the strength and the ability to to give up even food, the foods that we like, to show my faith to Him, to show my obedience to the Lord, right? And that's a lot about uh, some of what today is going to speak about as well, is obedience in the Lord. because. A big thing of what we're going to talk about today is I told you I was going to do a, a first and seconds, right? First Corinthians, second Corinthians, first uh, Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, first Timothy, second Timothy. A lot of that is about, yes, and re please remember right off the start, there's an application to all these things in the present, right? And things that we learn throughout our lives that were in these scriptures, but remember the I've been revealed the end time understanding, not to everything, but to a lot of the scriptures, the end time understanding. And that's what all this study is. And I've got like probably 12, 15 tabs opened up there, but I won't, I, I'm really going to try to do it as, as quickly, as cleanly as I can. And I'm not going to go through all of the scriptures. I'm going to let the reader go through the scriptures because the, the biggest purpose of this, of this talk today, of this video is for the left behind. The bride is about to go. 10% of the church is about to go, and the rest of the church is going to be left in confusion, in just absolute fear and trembling and in just lamenting and crying. It's, it's going to be horrible because they're going to think they missed everything. And like I always say, 1 Corinthians, right? 1 Corinthians, 1, Timothy, uh, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, is talking to the churches, the churches that have missed the escape, 
the pre-tribulation escape. It was not a rapture. The rapture is coming at some point in the year 2024. All right? But during that time, of course, you're going to need to learn doctrine and scripture as much as you can. But how to carry yourself, how to treat others, right? How to act, how to restrain, what you should restrain is found in first and second uh, sorry is found in first Corinthians, first Thessalonians, first Timothy. And in second Corinthians, second Thessalonians, second Timothy is for Judah. Now of course there all these scriptures are meant for all of us and there's t there's bits and pieces, tidbits here and there that we've always learned that we've come to know and to understand. But once you understand who these scriptures who the scriptures are speaking to, just like I showed you, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's it's what my ministry has been built off of since the Lord, excuse me, since the Lord revealed it to me about six months ago. Is that Luke is talking to the bride, Mark is talking to the church that was left behind, right? Israel, the lost sheep, and Matthew is speaking to Judah. All right, that's how it goes. That's who the books are speaking to. Now, yes, they speak and they, they talk about each other as well, but overall, that's who the books are speaking to. And we might even touch a little bit on the three of these today as well in different ways that maybe I hadn't shown you guys before. But it's just more and more evidence. Like if you, like if you go into the last book of Luke, Mark, and Matthew, and you read it, you're going to find a dozen differences between the exact same thing from Christ's resurrection. You're going to find a dozen different things. But what's really interesting, this was really interesting I came across the other day, is when you see when they get to the sepulcher and you see in Luke, Mark, and Matthew, in Matthew it says they get there and it's been removed and they go inside and then when they come out, then there's, the, the, there's or what was it? No, there was uh, two angels sitting inside, or two men. And then the one with Mark, there was one sitting there, something along those lines. Or there was one sitting on top of the stone was Matthew, right? An angel came down from heaven, bright, right? All bright and shining and everything else. And moved the stone and sat on top of the stone and said, who are you looking for? In Mark's group, they were the, the men were inside. There was a single man that was inside of the tomb, right? But then you have in Luke's group, you have what? Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Well, where do we get something like this? Where do we have the understanding of this? I'm not going to go there. I just want to touch base just to show you another difference. Two men stood by them in shining garments. These are angels. Well, where else do we have? Only in Luke do we have the two of them standing there. right? In Matthew, it's one that comes down. It's a single one. In Mark, you have one that's inside. It's a single one. All right. Here you have two men in shining garments, not just regular men, but in shining garments. They're angels. Who else had that? Lot, right? Lot and his family and the angels took them by the hand to take them out of the city, right? Because destruction couldn't come until they were gone. That was the same scenario. That's the same setup as it is for the bride. And here we are in Luke talking about the bride and two angels come for to, to explain to these guys. It's the same type of setup. All right. But I wanted to show you guys something. This was really interesting. I just came across this yesterday. The word tribulation or tribulations is not found. Well, here's the word tribulations, right? It's not found in the book of Luke. Watch this. Let's go back one. I should have it here still. Neither is the word tribulation. Let's see if it's going to show up. Hopefully it will. This is another great program I use. Outside of this one here, which is eSword, this is a great one that I use too, blueletterbible.org. The word tribulation is the one we're looking at now. It still says S there, but we're looking at the word tribulation. And look at this. Right? Where is it? Matthew, Matthew. Let's look at the New Testament, right? Matthew, Matthew, Mark, John, Acts, Romans, Second Corinthians, it's all the way through to Revelation. The word tribulation does not show up in the entire gospel of Luke. I thought that was really, really interesting. 
I didn't know that before. The word tribulation does not show up. Tribulation or tribulations does not show up at all in the Gospel of Luke. The entire Gospel. Just to show you again more evidence that Luke's group, the bride, isn't going through tribulation. All right? Now there's another word in Luke that I wanted to go over as well. There's the word, the word vanish. Right? Actually vanished. But we could see here, it's in none of the Gospels. And when you look at the application, look at the application. You got to remember the word vanish here, see in the New Testament, it's a future tense. It shall vanish away in 1 Corinthians, right? In Hebrews 8, is uh, and waxed old is ready to vanish away. None of these are vanished away. It says they're being prepared to, they shall, but it's not an actual vanishing, all right? But now watch this. What's another word for vanish is the word that's used vanished, all right? Vanished, look at this, in the New Testament is only found one time, and it is in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and it's Jesus who vanished out of their sight. Right, let's go to that. Luke 24. Right, it, actually, it's where we already are. Right, there's so much here in the last chapter of Luke, Mark, and Matthew that are so different one from the other. It's just incredible. And I touched on it, I believe, in a previous video, the maybe the second last video, I think it was, maybe a little bit even of the last video. It's it's incredible. But watch this. In Luke 24, see? So, and it came to pass as he sat to meet. So, when he had shown up, they didn't know that Jesus was walking with them, right? And he says, oh, no, I'm going to go on. They're like, no, 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 stay, stay. It's getting late in the day. Abide with us, right? It's getting late. The, the day is far spent. So Jesus tarries with them. But at this point, they don't know that it's Jesus, right? And it came to pass as he sat to eat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. The word vanished. Right? We can look at this and we can say, oh, well, look at how many times the word shows up. No, 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 no. Don't get that confused with the word itself. There's all the different meanings to the word, all right? But the word vanished appears only in the book of Luke and in all of the New Testament. The word shows up one time, and it's the word when it's the word vanished, where Christ is the one that vanished from before their eyes. Well, guess what? Where else do we see that word vanished? The root word of what we're waiting for, guys. The poof. When we go, the vanishing. The word escape. To escape all these things. One of my favorites. You guys know this, right? Second Corinthians is another one. Right, but watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Escape. Look at the word escape. To flee out, to escape, but look where it comes from. It comes from 5343. All right, 53. 43 right here okay by analogy to vanish to vanish the word escape comes from the word to vanish which is exactly what Jesus did and it's found only one time in the New Testament and the word tribulation or tribulations is all throughout the New Testament but never once found in the book of Luke. <laughs> I just thought that was awesome, guys. So I wanted to share that with you. You know, even doing, a, I wasn't really going to get into this, but I'll touch on it, is guys, pay attention. Pay attention because remember the count with Billy Graham. Remember the count with Billy Graham. Yes, Billy Graham 
died on the 21st of February. However, he died early in the morning. He died at around 7 or so, or I believe that's when the reports, the reports came out late 7-ish, right? 7.30 a.m., something like that. But I believe he, he may have died around, give or take, around 7 o'clock. Well, remember, if we're going evening to evening, if we're going off Hebrew calendar understanding, that would be what? That would be the day of the 20th, right? That would be the day before because it goes from evening to evening, right? So here, let's bring up the calendar. So he died on the 21st, but he died early in the morning. But the 21st, right, we're on from the 20th. If you do that day count and you go from that 20th, we have April 1st. Right? We're looking at April 1st. We know that Methuselah was the sign. When Methuselah died, what happened? That year, that time, that same year, the flood began. When, when Jonah went into Nineveh, he was the 40 day sign. Right? You understand? It's a man that's the 40 day sign. Right? When Jesus came, he was the sign. And in the end days for us, there is going to be another man that's going to be a 40-day sign. And we're all looking here for this April 1st time frame, right, from the evening. Now, remember, we're looking at this day right here. We're looking, the 40-day count is from the evening of the 31st to the morning of the 1st, right? So that's how you get your 40-day count. It's exactly on from the evening of the 31st to the morning of the of the first that is your 40 day count all right so i mean you know what i got to go into it i wasn't going to go into this but i'm going to touch on it real quick maybe i'll leave that other portion of that video i'll do it in another one here <clears throat> because this is something that i've had on my plate here for almost a week so let's look at this the passover all right the feast these are the feasts of the Lord, a holy convocation. In the 14th day of the first month is the Lord's Passover. All right? So all these people that are looking right now for March 16th, 17th, forget about it. All right? Yes, it's the new year. It's not the 6,000th year, guys. The tribulation I've shown you before in Genesis, Genesis 8, all right, when he sends out the doves, right, the raven, and then the dove the first time, the dove the second time, the dove the third time, when does all this happen? And it came to pass in the 600th year, right, in the 600th, which is the 6,000th, in the first year, in the first month, in the first day. You see that? The tribulation happened, and when it was over, the 6,000 years ended. All right? So... We're not looking, we're not in the 6,000th year yet. Okay, the 6,000th year is the year 20, end of 2031, beginning of 2032. That is what we're looking for. This time frame, when it, in the year, in our Gregorian 2032, we're looking for Nisa, well, we're not, <laughs> we're not looking for that at all. Uh, this is when Christ returns, right? And I believe right here at this change, which is the year 2032, is when it's going to happen. All right? We're not in the 6,000th year. I don't care. It's, it, it's not. We're in the time just based. Always go by scripture. I always come with scripture, guys, and it's right here, right? This is all the tribulation, right? And then he shows sending out the dove. And then the next time, this is the one for the, the escape. This is the one that gets plucked off, right? He plucks off the, the olive leaf and brings it. This is the rapture. And then this is when he doesn't come back again, the second seven years, which is the 14 years of tribulation. All right? And then what happens? It's right here. 6,000th year. First year, first day, first month, first day. It, it's not, it can't be any more clear than right here. All right? So this isn't what we're looking for. This right here is what we're looking for. This Passover time frame, the day after the Passover, right? The day after, the 15th, the first day, all right? 
And I'm going to show you that here in Leviticus. Right? God's not going to do it on some random day. Right? Just because the calendar changed years. No, he's got his appointed feast days. Right? What did we learn before in uh, Numbers 10? Right? This is the assembly. This first one I talked about in a previous video. When they shall blow with them both trumpets that the Lord had Moses make. When you blow with both trumpets, the first assembly, this first group, right? This first multitude shall be, shall assemble themselves. So this assembly shall assemble themselves to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, right? We're in Numbers 10. This tabernacle of the congregation is an appointed time, specifically a festival, a fixed time. Right? This congregation, which is when the rapture happens, isn't the same word. <coughs> See, it's not Hebrew 4150. It's congregation, and it's 6951, which means an assembly, a congregation of people, which the church is a congregation. This assembly is not called a church. Right? This assembly is a multitude of people. This one is the bride, and they're going to meet at the appointed time an appointed time and that's what we're looking at here at leviticus in leviticus 23 the passover is on the 14th day of the first month at even see at evening see at dusk at evening time so what does that mean the evening right here of the 14th day so right here from here to evening here on the 15th, this is the Passover. Okay, so we've got that established. Now let's look further down. And on the 15th day, all right, on the 15th day, which part of the day? Look, the hot of the day, the hours, the warm hours of the day. So it's explaining to us, not the 24 hour, meaning during the whole day of that day, but within that daytime, all right, on the 15th day, which is right here, right? It goes from evening to daytime. So on the daytime here, all right? And if we're wrong with this understanding that the 14th would start here and it goes to here, then we would be a day off forward, all right? That it would go from here to here and then from here to here. But it doesn't make sense because it says on the evening of the 14th. So we're looking from here to here. And then from here to here, April 1st. All right. The other thing we got to remember about April 1st is my other videos. I talked about when the time of Jesus, I believe it was during, even during the time of Jesus, they were using the Julian calendar. All right. It was on the Julian calendar. This was the celebrated, this was the celebrated time of the new year for the, the Gentiles. All right. Not what we have now for our Gregorian calendar. The Julian was always celebrated on April 1st because there was a celebration here probably during the time of Passover and so forth that they were celebrating. So they always use this one as the official day to celebrate, which is where I've spoken about it before many times, where we get April Fools from because the French came in with their April Fools and called everybody fools and made a joke and stuck things on their back, the fish cutouts on their back on April 1st because they hadn't switched over to the Gregorian calendar. But prior to that, it was the Julian. Even in the time of Christ, it was the Julian calendar and it was April 1st. So on top of all these things with Billy Graham's death and a man to be the 40-day sign and April 1st was really the celebrated time of the new year and with the Passover this year, look at this. I mean, go into all the years you want and try to find another one between now and the year 2032 and maybe even bond, beyond, you're not going to find another one that lands on April 1st. All right? Now, Passover does land here, right? From here to here is the Lord's Passover, is God's Passover. But it's the next day that we're looking at. Watch this. All right? So on the 15th day, which is the following day, you shall have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, all right? In the first day, 
you shall have a holy convocation, a calling out, an assembly also a rehearsal. You shall do no servile work therein. On the first day, all right, your first day, which is right here, the daytime, on the first day, see, even this one, in the warmth of the day, that means the warm hours, the daytime hours, April 1st during the day. And then what? But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Seven years of the seals you shall offering you shall offer a fire unto the Lord, an offering made by fire. This is the tribulation of the seals. But look at this. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. So in the seventh day, right? So the, the whole seventh day hasn't happened. In it is another holy convocation, is another calling out, another assembly. See that? Seven days later, seven years later after this fire. This is the tribulation, all right, of the seals. And why I have highlighted in is because just like I show you in Revelation uh, Revelation 6, after the sixth seal, what happens? The 144,000 get sealed and the rapture of the church happens. And then you have the seventh seal. So six and a half years in, right? Just like I've shown on my timeline, six and a half years in is when the, here it comes, there we go, right? So you have three and a half years, three years, then you have the rapture, the 144,000 sealed, then you have the rapture of the church, and then you have six months, which, which, is, which is the seventh seal, it's the half hour of silence in heaven, and six month time frame on earth, all right? where things are going to be quiet. That is in the seventh year, in the seventh day. All right? Now watch this, though. Uh, speak unto the children of Israel when they harvest the land, which I give unto you. You shall reap the harvest thereof. Then you shall bring a sheaf, right? An omer, right? You shall bring a heap of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest and he shall wave the sheaf the omer the sheaf offering right the bundle the heap before the lord to be accepted for you on the day after on the morrow after the sabbath after the sabbath passover is on the Sabbath. The day after the Sabbath is on the first day of Omer, right? That's common. That's the way it's supposed to be. However, you can go into many years. In the year 2019, it falls on on the uh, on a Friday again, but it doesn't always fall on a Friday, and never does it fall in the next. 14 years, 15 years, never does it fall on April 1st again. And I don't even believe outside of twice in 14 more years will it fall on a Friday. It should always be on a Friday based on this. Right? And on the morrow, meaning the day after the Sabbath. Right? We know when the Sabbath is, see, the Passover and then it's going to be unleavened bread, seven days, right? And then you go into your first fruits. They bring in the first fruits, but they're not going to wave. Meaning what's going to happen? Your Passover is from here to here, which is also your Sabbath. They're not going to wave the sheaf offering until the next day, right? So evening to evening. So this is the evening of the first day. Here's the actual daytime of the first day, which is the counting of the Omar beginning. Right? But this is the sheaf offering. This is the first fruit offering right here on this day 
when it gets waved, when Jesus was crucified and so forth, and when he resurrected, and they were able to wave the sheaf offering, right here, the resurrection day. And it falls on April 1st, which we know historically to be the first day. Right? There's some really good teachings I have that I found on the harvest. So you guys can type this stuff in and look it up. But it didn't stay highlighted for me, unfortunately. So I don't remember where it was. But it talks about the, uh, okay, newly harvested grain cannot be eaten until the first fruits had been offered on the day after the Sabbath. All right? And you can go in and read all about this. It's a really good read here. But this was really interesting down here, too. In a good year, when the grain offering yielded great, the threshing and the grape picking overlapped. Right? The threshing. This is the wheat. The threshing. This is called the time of tribulation during the church tribulation. When they're going through the tribulation of the church during the seals, right? When that threshing happens, there's going to be, and then when the when the full harvest comes in, because you got to remember, there's the first fruits, there's the harvest, and then there's the gleaning, the stuff that's left, right? Because what's going to happen? The first fruits for the church is the bride. This is what everybody is messing up. You know, even Scotty Clark, his recent video, I haven't even watched the whole thing. I couldn't go through it all because he mixes it up, right? He's talking about, what he's talking about essentially, what Scotty's talking about is Revelation 7. He's talking about the 144,000 getting sealed and they're the first fruits. And then he's talking about the rapture of the church, which is the main harvest, and then those who are left. What he's done is he's put all these people, uh, the 144,000, that are the first fruits. He's mixed them in because these guys are the first fruits. But they are the first fruits to the grape harvest. They're not the first fruits of the wheat harvest. This is what everybody must understand. This is what everybody is getting wrong, which is why everybody messes up the fact that there is a portion of the church, the bride, that is going first, that is going to be taken out from all of these things. The bride is the wheat harvest, is the first fruits of the wheat harvest. That is what's going on, is the first fruits of the wheat harvest. There is the first fruits. And then at Pentecost is when you have the harvest of the rest. But the first fruits comes in just the day after Pentecost. All right? And that is for the wheat. The church is the wheat. The grape harvest, see? The fruit harvest, the grape one, the picking of the grape one. See, they overlap. This is such, guys, you guys should go copy this, okay? I'll put it in the show notes if I remember. I don't know if I will. Copy it and come and read and get the understanding of it. And I'm going to show you the understanding of it. See, in a good year, when the yield, when the grain, when the wheat harvest was good, it went on longer. And there was a threshing, and it went on longer that it overlapped, meaning it came close into summer. They'll, they'll call it summer, but really it's maybe a couple weeks away from summer or a week or so away from summer. And it overlaps with the picking the, of the grapes. This is your picking of the grapes. This is your first fruits of the grape picking. This is your 144,000 that overlap with the rapture that's going to take place in 2024. This is your Revelation 7. You're overlapping. You have your 144,000 sealed. Then you have the rapture. The threshing is over. The 144,000 from the grapes. See, 
Grapes are the first major crop to ripen. And they overlap with the Pentecost harvest. You see that? Do you get it? All the that's that's why I love Scotty Clark and he's helped and blessed so many. I'm not against him. His teaching because of his understanding of the harvests is wrong. Okay? It is wrong. There's a harvest for the wheat. There is a harvest for the grapes, for the fruits. Okay? There's a first fruits for the wheat, just as there is a first fruits for the fruits. That's what's going on. The first fruits for the bride is the bride for the harvest. Oh, sorry, the first fruits of the wheat is the bride, is the 10% first fruits that I've been telling you that that woman prophesied in a thus saith the Lord that I showed you in a video. Those are the first fruits of the wheat. And then there's the harvest after the threshing. There is the harvest at Pentecost of the rest of the wheat. And when the harvest is great, which I'm going to show you in Scripture, it's going to overlap with the picking of the first fruits, which is the grapes, which is the 144,000. Do you guys see it? That's what I'm telling you. That's what's going on. That's what's going on in Revelation 14. All right? They were redeemed from among men, from among the earth, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. These are the grapes. These are the first fruits of the grapes. They overlapped with the harvest of the wheat. Do you see that? Each harvest has its first fruits. Each harvest has its main harvest. And when the wheat harvest, the grain harvest is great, it overlaps with the 144,000 that are going to get sealed from among men at the grape picking. That is what's going on. All right? Let's sh let me show you this. Let's go into Luke 10. It's right here. Clear as day for us, all right? Therefore said he unto them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye that the laborers, that the harvest that he sent forth, right? So what's happening here? These guys, it's the hundred, this is all about the 144,000, all right? When they get sealed, right off the bat, see? You have your 70 it talks about here, and then it talks about them what? I talked about this before. They come back again, right? They come back and the 70 return again. And they say with joy unto the Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And Jesus said unto them, behold, I, I beheld Satan fall. Uh, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And what happens? Jesus gives power unto the 144,000, greater power than they had before. When, at the midway point of the trumpets, right before the time of, or right around, probably around the same time, because Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning, right? So that's when Satan is cast down to the earth at the fifth trumpet. Right at that time, these guys are given power by Jesus so that they cannot be killed. Doesn't matter what comes against them. Scorpions, the enemy whether they're poisoned, they can't be killed. But what happens at the very beginning when they got sealed? All the way back here. This is when they got sealed. This is Revelation 7. When they first got sealed, what happens? They were responsible to gather the harvest of the wheat, to finish, to bring those guys in. Right? Look, they were there to gather. Pray, therefore, uh, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send fellow laborers into the harvest. Why? Because it's a great harvest. They have overlapped. It was a good year. The harvest, the yield, was great. Because at the rapture of the church, there's going to be over a billion people 
boom, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, vanishing or, or being raptured, not vanishing. That's for the bride. That are going to get raptured. You see that? Because they overlapped with the grape picking. They're going to be responsible for them right off the bat, right there at the beginning. Right there at the beginning. There they are. It's as if this here is their representation of being sealed. And then it says, truly, the harvest is great. It's the exact same thing as Revelation 7. You see that? That's what we're looking for. And then what happens is they go on, they do their thing, and they're doing all these things, all these miraculous things, right? And then they return, and Christ gives them more power, and they're going to be doing even greater things. This is also Mark, the last chapter of Mark. Remember, these guys are coming from the church. They're going to be from among the churches. Do they believe yet? I, I don't know if they believe in Jesus Christ if, or if they're going to believe him at his coming. And there's a reason I say that. It's, it's all throughout uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, right? They, they get in trouble, even right here. You can read this for yourselves in Mark 16. Just like I said, right? Last chapter, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's great, right? And it says uh, Jesus was risen. See, look at this. And when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week. See who he appeared to first. And then look at this. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. Right? as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Who didn't believe them? The 144,000, right? The disciples didn't believe them. They didn't believe who? The two witnesses that showed up first. The two witnesses showed up and said, hey, the Lord's coming. So what happens? Jesus gets there and he's unbraided. He, he's, he's upset with them and saying, look, Guys, they came and told you and you didn't believe it, right? Now you guys need to get your act together. And look what happens. In my name, you shall cast out devils. You shall speak in other tongues. You shall tread on serpents. This is the 144,000 now going out. When? At the end of the book of Mark. <laughs> I've told you, right? I've told you. Mark is speaking to the church. And here we are. At the end of the book of Mark, right? At the end of it, we have what? The two witnesses come onto the scene. They tell the 144,000 they don't believe it because they probably don't believe. They might believe of Christ. They know that he's coming, but they don't necessarily know who they are yet. The, the four angels and Jesus are going to come and seal them. And he's going to give them crap because they didn't believe the two witnesses that told them first. And then, boom, they're going to be sealed. And then they're going to go out and preach and heal, cast out devils. Then they're not going to be hurt by serpents or nothing. Nobody's going to be able to hurt them that tries to lay their hands on them. It's the exact same thing. Right? It's the same thing. It is Revelation 7. Right? When they get sealed. And then what happens? The rapture of the church happens. At the end of the book of Mark. Boom. What happens at the end of the book of Mark? Watch this. Right at the end of it, we went through this. Here's your 144,000. They didn't believe them. And then Jesus comes, gives them trouble. They believe. Right? And then signs are going to follow them. Cast out devils. All of this. This is the 144,000. And then what happens? Jesus was received up into heaven. Jesus gets received up into heaven. This is when the hundred and four, or sorry, this is when the rapture happens. They get their assignment. They get to do all these things. Jesus then is received up into heaven. Not, not brought, not carried up into heaven like Luke's group, but received up as a guest because this is the rapture of the church. 144,000 get sealed, rapture of the church, 144,000 go forth to work confirming miracles and preaching everywhere. At the last chapter in the book of Mark. Come on, guys. It's all here. It's amazing. It is so incredible. All right? 
It's Revelation 7. It's Revelation 14, that portion. Right? It's what I'm talking about here with the great harvest. Because the rapture at that point is going to be a great harvest. And the 144,000 are going to be there to help bring them all together. And then they're going to go off and do their work. You see that? The, har the, the first fruits is of the wheat harvest is the bride going. We know that first fruits is 10%. 10% of the wheat harvest is the bride going, I believe, around April 1st, give or take a day or two this year, a couple weeks from now, give or take. So be ready. Be repentant. Be watching. Be praying. Give thanks to the Lord God. Give thanks to Jesus in everything. In all things. Get on your knees when you can, if you can. But always be thankful. Always be repentant. Watch and pray always. Right? Because the main harvest at Pentecost is the main harvest. This is your rapture. And you want to see something? Watch this. In a good year, we said, right? When the harvest is great. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, look at where Pentecost lands. All right, Shavuot. Look at where Pentecost comes. This is normal. In latish May into, into early June, right? But if you keep going and you go year by year, you're going to see where they've added, you know, of course, when they add an Adar, it's they're foreshadowing an Adar because they won't know until the Abib, right? Until it's ready. But they've added an Adar in the, in, uh, in the year 19, 2019. All right. Let's see where, let's see where Pentecost falls. All right. On the 9th of June. Now, you can keep going like this. You can go to this pro program, Hebrew Calendar, right? HebrewCal.com. And you can keep going. And you're going to see for the next 14 years, as you go further and keep checking it out, I'm going to show you that the year 2024 is the one that goes the furthest out. Look at this. Pentecost doesn't show up until the 12th of June. Very late. Why? Because the harvest is great. And that's where they say, that's why they'll say summer, because it almost overlaps. It's usually about a week when the harvest is great. When it extends out far, it's going to be somewhat overlapping with summer and it overlaps with the time of the grape picking. And the year 2024, which I've told you and I've shown you, which has to do with what? When you see the eclipse, the second eclipse that's going to mark the X where the New Madrid fault is going to go. Now, is it going to go here? No, but the, the, the X is going to mark the spot here with the eclipse across America on April 8th, and between then and the rapture of the church, somewhere around here, give or take, but times and things are going to be changed again by, by the Antichrist. He's going to try and want to change the seasons and the times, remember? But you're looking at around mid-ish June for the rapture. Late in the season because the harvest is great. You get it? That's what it's talking about. The harvest is going to be great. All right? Now, what else do we know? What are we still looking for, guys? So I hope that clarifies, right? Bride, first fruits of the wheat, going, I believe, within a couple weeks and change, give or take. Then you have your main harvest in the year 2024. But before the main harvest goes... It's going to overlap with the first fruits of the fruit harvest. And the grapes are the first fruit of the fruit harvest. Those are your 144,000. They are going to be sealed and remain on the earth 
for Judah, for Matthew's group. All right? Mark's group is now going to be raptured. The sealed are going to get sealed within there, and they're going to remain unharmed, preaching throughout the whole earth for Matthew's group, <clears throat> for Judah, for the Hebrew. All right? That's what's happening. First fruits, main harvest. First fruit, main harvest. There is gleaning left for both. For those that didn't come to believe, those that didn't come to understand the truth, that were hidden out in caves, that were tribes in remote areas of the world, there is gleaning left in both cases. And they'll survive to the time when the millennium comes. And either they'll come to accept Christ or eventually they'll die off. All right? But that's what's going to happen. You have first fruits, harvest, gleaning. First fruits, harvest, gleaning. Right? First fruits, harvest, leftovers. First fruits, harvest, leftovers, meaning just a small numbers throughout the earth. That's the understanding of it. So as much as Scotty was trying to give you the correct understanding, he was wrong by mixing in the first fruits of the fruit harvest with the main harvest of the wheat. All right? I hope that's clear. I, I've hopefully beaten that enough that it's understood. All right? So now just to finish off, what are we waiting for? We are waiting for this, remember? Billy Graham, I believe, was, he falls right on the 40-day count, guys. He is a man, world-renowned. <clears throat> the world was watching on him. I believe he was the 40-day sign. And in between that, before it and after it, we were looking for signs in the sun, August 21st, 2017, in the moon, which was the... Uh, Tuba Shavat moon on April 31st. And now we're waiting for what? We're waiting for a single star. Come on. We're waiting for a constellation that's going to put forth a single star. And look at this. I'm not looking at this. Okay, guys, just pay attention here. I'm not looking at this and saying, oh, yeah, these guys are so right. No, they've been wrong in their stuff too. But I was talking about this with my wife yesterday. Paul Begley mentioned it, and I wanted to talk about it as well. He talked about it because of this, this, uh, what is it, the uh, orbiting uh, telescope or whatever it is that China has that's coming down. That's not what we're talking about here. See, the, the, the Hopi, their final sign, guys, their final sign of the destruction of the white feather as you, you will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens, a constellation. Right above the earth that shall fall and crash, it will appear as a blue star. Right? The Bible tells us the bride is waiting for the beginning of all this stuff to take place. We are waiting for the appearance in the stars of a constellation that's going to put forth a single star. It's not going to crash or it's not going to hit, I don't believe, for, for it, the biblical understanding, unless it's smaller. It's not going to hit, but there's going to probably be fragments of it and so forth, just like whether it be Planet X or Nibiru. That's going to fall. It's going to disturb the earth. It's going to put men into freaking out, and it's going to change, which is the meaning of supervene, everything that's going to come upon the earth. Or every every plan that all men had on earth is about to change once this appears. All right? And the powers of heaven and earth are going to be shaken. And then the bride is gone. We're not going to be here. The bride is not going to be here to receive any of this punishment that comes from it. All right? The bride is going to poof, vanish. No tribulation for Luke's group. All right? There was uh, another prophecy by this guy here. You may have seen this guy. Uh, I've seen him on in years past or, or over the years on Sid Roth. All right? I've seen him on Sid Roth. It's supernatural. I'm not going to go into, uh, into playing it all. But what I wanted to do was he had a prophecy in... On January 19th, 2014, this guy is a prophet as well. He's had it a lot. 
I've seen him on, like I said, on Sid Roth and other on other things as well. This is his name, Hank uh, Kuhneman. And he talks about a sign, right? Uh, this wind has been but a sign. And it goes on to talk about it. You can read that. <clears throat> but I want to get to the best part where he's talking more about the sign. See, for even now the enemy is afraid of the sound of my chariot that rides across the nation. Right? So could could the uh could the Elijah spirit already be here? Possibly, right? But this is the part I wanted to get to. This one here. For very soon I will tell you sorry. For very soon I will tell you of a gram, a telegram. For as Methuselah was in his day, in old age, a sign that a flood would come, the Spirit of God says, this is almost like saying, thus saith the Lord, all right? My angels are waiting to welcome my servant Billy Graham. Remember, this is January 19, 2014. <clears throat> this is a sign. What is a sign? The receiving of Billy Graham. Th Billy Graham is a sign unto this nation, but look, not only unto this nation, not only unto America, but unto the earth as well. Right? Where do we see that? We see that in Luke. Right? Let's go to Luke 21. Right? What do we see? Luke 21, 24. For as a snare shall it come on all all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth right the escape of the bride from the 40-day count of the sign that Billy Graham was shall be the sign unto the nation unto the earth for when the sound comes from my throne to welcome my servant a reformation shall begin upon this land now he believes that this reformation is uh, he talks about, and you guys can go check out this video, but he goes and talks about how when Lazarus, Lazarus was raised from the dead, it affected a group of people, his friends and family, but a reformation is government, is finances, is, is the whole church. It's, it's a large, far-reaching reformation. He understands it as being, you know, the restoring of America and the restoring of the banking and uh, oh, this corruption being kicked out. Maybe some of that has something to do with it. But no, not overall. This is the reformation of the tribulation. This is the bride is gone. Billy Graham was the warning. Like I've been saying, I just came across this video today. Billy Graham is the sign, the 40-day sign. These other signs have been happening around it. We're waiting for one more star sign that the Hopi also are looking for before it begins. <clears throat> and then a reformation shall begin. Yeah, a reformation in the land is going to be the tribulation, right? The tribulation is going to begin. What happened with Methuselah? If Methuselah got sick, they were afraid back then. You know, does Methuselah have a cold? Give him all the medicine we can. Because when he goes, the floodwaters are going to come. And what happened when the flood came? Tribulation began. Right? That's why I don't understand when he reads this un his understanding of Reformation. He thinks that everything's going to be made good again. No. The tribulation is going to begin from the 40-day count, I believe, of Billy Graham's death. So that would mean that between now... And April 1st, we should see something in the sky that the world is going to see. Even the Hopi, they believe that it's going to eventually be seen. So it's going to be seen. See, it'll be a day of purification. What does it say? It says uh, somewhere in here too. Oh, and the end of that. Anyways, it talks about that uh, they also believe it's going to be when the world sees it, right? So there's people all over the world, like WSO channel, right? YouTube channel. They're showing this stuff, and they've been showing this stuff for years. Well, it's eventually going to come out of its hiding spot. 
and it's going to be seen by the whole world. I believe we're going to see this. You should go to the WSO uh, YouTube channel, Steve Olson, and you should watch what he's talking about. How the the even his latest video, uh, a, a guy somewhere in South America, I think in Ecuador, and he's triangulated, right? For years, he's done this triangulation based on its approach where you're going to see more of these greater earthquakes or vol or volcano eruptions. And if you go do a search now where they're happening, the, the bulk of the big ones, they're right in his triangle areas. And it all has to do with when this star is put forth, right? Saying that means it's close. So, guys, we, we're close. And that means I believe that we're going to see this between now and April 1st. Is it a week before, two weeks before, a day before? I don't know. But we're going to see it beforehand. And then the bride is going to go soon after seeing it. Not immediately. But when it becomes visible to the whole world and fear starts taking over people, right? Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud. That's for the bride. This is the bride going. This is what we're waiting for, guys. All right? So God bless. I really hope that clarified too, the first fruit, main harvest, first fruit, main harvest. Guys, that is the understanding. Um, I, it wasn't a bashing on Scotty Clark. I really just had to put this out because he was mixing two different harvests together with the first fruit and the main. So I want to clear that up for you guys. And please share this with everybody. Let everybody get that understanding. Let them see the truth of these harvests and of the time that we're in and how close it is. We can see it from the year 24 to the year, the end of the year 31 to the beginning of 32, going into Psalms, going all over the place, all right? So with that, everybody, I love you, God bless you, and we'll talk to you again soon. I know I still have to do at least one more video. All right, guys, so take care. God bless.